Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis and welcome to this next video lesson. We're going to be talking about how to create a sphere calculator project. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Visual Basic for that and as you can see I've already created a project called sphere calculator project. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop a button label and a text box to the form. I don't need the toolbox anymore so I'll minimize that and I'll move this label over here. The text property for that label will be enter the radius. Place a text box right next to it like that and then I'll have a button over here that says uh, calculate for the um, text property of the button. I'll just take this label, copy and paste it over here and we'll say something like um, surface area And then what I want to do is I want to place another label over here, but with a 3D uh, border. So again, I'll just take this label, copy and paste it. Let me go ahead and change the auto size property to false. I'll change the border style to fix 3D. And I want this thing to be the same height as this text box. So I'll move it over here, readjust the size, and then I'm going to make it so that that magenta underline appears. That, that tells me that the text is going to be at the same level, level as the surface area label. And then I'll just simply resize it over here so it's on the right hand side of this uh, text box, also on the button. That looks pretty good. We've got to get rid of that text. So I'll scroll down. I'll double click on text, hit delete, and that gets rid of the text. Now I can take these two, copy and paste, which is control C, control V. I'll move them into position, something like that. I'll unselect, reselect this guy over here, and we're going to change that text to volume. So in essence, we're trying to determine the sphere area, surface area, and also the volume. So now I can resize all this stuff in terms of the form. I don't want the minimize or the maximize button, so I'm going to double click on uh, maximize box and also on minimize box to make both of those false. That goes away. Let's change this form one text. So go to the text property and we'll type sphere calculator, enter. All right, so this takes care of the graphical user interface. Let's now give meaningful names to all of the items here. Uh, so for example, for this text box, we're going to change that name property to TXT radius. This button, we'll change that to BTN calculate. This label will be LBL surface area. And then finally, this label down here, LBL volume. Again, we're trying to give meaningful names to each of these items. We're going to use the Hungarian notation, so all text boxes have a TXT prefix, all buttons have a BTN prefix, and then, of course, all labels have the LBL prefix. Okay, that takes care of this graphical user interface. I'm now going to save everything. It automatically saves it into the projects folder, so I'll just simply click Save. We're now ready to go into the programming part. So I'll we'll double click the calculate button. And I'm going to minimize the properties panel because I don't need that right now. I'm going to start off with four comments. Declarations, get user input, calculation, and then finally output. Those are typically the four uh, comments that you should start off every single program because this is in general what you'll be doing. So let's start off with the declarations. Well, the first thing I'm going to have to determine is what things are going to be inputted and what things are going to be output. So in this case, I'm going to be inputting the value of the radius because the user will click something in, or enter a value in here and I need to obtain that. And then when I'm finished calculating, I'll need to output the surface area and the volume. So radius, surface area, volume. Seems like those are the items that I need. So uh, radius. And what we're going to do is we're going to declare this as a double because it is possible that the radius could be a real number. In other words, this doesn't necessarily have to be a whole number. If this were a whole number, then that would be integer. But it is possible that somebody could enter 2.5, say for example. Same thing with the surface area. We'll declare that as a double. And we'll also declare a volume as a double. Okay, well now that I've declared three variables, I'm ready to get the user input. So what I'll do is I will assign to radius convert dot to double whatever's inside of the text box. Now notice I just type in TXT and it shows me that the only text box that I have 
that I've given a TXT name to is TXT radius. So I'll just double click, dot, don't forget, to text. Close the parens. Okay, so now I've obtained the text from this text box. I'm converting it to a number and I'm going to assign it into the radius uh, variable. I'm ready for the calculation now. Okay, so for example, let's go ahead and solve for surface area and volume. So what I've done is I've already taken a look at a website that shows me the formulas for surface area and for volume. For surface area, we see that it's 4 pi r squared. Okay, so that's going to be uh, surface area is equal to 4.0 times pi, which I'll just simply use math.pi times r squared. So I'll use the math.pow function and that's going to be the radius comma 2.0. So what this does right here is this is the same thing as r squared. This is obviously pi and then of course that's the number 4 for this particular equation. 4 pi r squared, 4 pi r squared. Okay now let's go ahead and calculate the volume. Now the volume according to the formula is 4 divided by 3 pi r cubed. Okay so 4 divided by 3 times pi times r cubed, so we'll just use the pow function again, and that's going to be the radius cubed. Okay, so this formula takes care of this requirement over here. All right, well now that I have calculated the surface area and the volume, I'm ready to output my results. Okay, so I need to place the results of surface area and volume into these labels, but remember these are these are text labels. They don't have uh, they can't contain numeric values. Now they can contain text representations of numbers, but they don't contain actual numbers. What do I mean by that? Look, this is a text property. There's no such thing as a number property in the properties list for labels. So what I've got to do is this. I'll say LVL surface area dot text. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert uh, to string whatever the value of surface area is. So let me let me rephrase this. Take this number, which as you can see over here is a double. Take this number, convert it to a text. That's what two string really means. Convert this thing to a text and then place it into the text property of this label. So if you have text over here, you have to have text over here. They have to be balanced. Same thing for the volume. We'll just simply say lvlvolume.text. And again, we'll convert dot to string whatever is uh, in the variable volume. So we take this number, which is a double, we convert it to a string, we're going to place that value into the text property of this particular label. And that should do it. So let's go ahead and run the program. Okay, so here it is. And uh, let's say that I enter the number 2. Okay, so if I were to plug the 2 in here, so it looks like the surface area is 50.26, the volume is 33.5. Let's try another number one. What if I type in 5? Okay, so I don't know if this value is right or wrong, so let me go ahead and open up the calculator just to double check my work. So I'll open up this calculator and let's see here. For example, for the surface area, it looks like that's going to be 4 times pi, so we'll say 3.14159 uh, times r squared. Well, that would be 5 squared is 25, so we'll say times 25. And what is the answer? 314.159, yep, that's exactly what it is. How about for the volume? Let's double check that. So let me go ahead and click clear. Okay, so that's going to be 4 divided by 3. So 4 divided by 3 equals times pi, which is 3.14159 times the radius cubed. Well, 5 times 5 times 5 is basically what that is. So times 5 times 5 times 5 equals, looks like it's 523.598. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So it looks like my calculation is correct. The program works. All right, so that takes care of how to create a sphere calculator project. So this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.